I literally left um, Minnesota with $20 and I came to California and I came out here and I lived off of two tacos and water a day. But the good news is there is always going to be a beautiful rainbow. Something will come to, to save you. You got to put the work in. And I, I'm a person who believes the universe rewards you for taking a chance on yourself. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Bar podcast. I'm your host, Denise Tova, And today we are diving into the world of rock and roll with a true game changer. Our guest is Melina Moe, the acclaimed singer, actress. She is a trendsetter when it comes to fashion. Oh, my gosh. She, she's on fire. Songwriter. Um, she, a lefty guitarist. Um, she's been making the waves in the music industry and with her latest album, Dirty, topping the billboards, blue charts, and her genre defying sounds just captivates audiences globally, I'm sure. And I am ready to dive in and get to know her story beyond her fame. Her energy is just fascinating. Melina, welcome to the show. Thank you. What an intro. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. No, seriously. And and it does not serve you. I mean, it, it's just, it's not enough. I know there's so many layers to you. And I, you know, I, and I said this before, I go by energy. Mm -hmm. I yeah. really, we, we really have never met before. We've never connected. Mm -hmm. I've seen you on social yep. media so mm -hmm. I really, truly do look forward to to getting to know you. Let's start with, you know, going way back. Let's let's talk okay. about your story. What is your story and what or who inspired you to get into uh, music? That's, uh, that's a great place to start. So for me, I actually, um, I come from a musical family. So it was always my mom, my dad, and my uh, two brothers. And you know, watching my mom and dad play music all the time. It was just, I think it was something that I just, you know, we just all fell into doing it and absolutely loved it. Um, so I, I'll just cut to this. So, you know, just growing up in a family band, we grew up in Minnesota. So, you know, obviously that is, as I should say, the great state of Minnesota. <laughs> and now, um, you know, Prince obviously was there. Uh, Minneapolis has always just been on the forefront of music. So having uh, the chance to just grow up in that environment and just be around, for me, some of the best players in the world. Um, I mean, it's just gonna totally inspire you. But what happened was this. So um, I said, you know what? I've, we've always been a family band. We traveled around the world. This has been fun, but I wanna discover Melina. And again, I say this to say, my mom is a beautiful person. And she basically was like, listen, um, Melina, when I tell you the story, she says, you know, I'll just tell you the story. She basically said, okay, Melina, if you leave, you'll leave with what you got. So I was like, okay, I have 20 bucks. So I literally left, um, I'm so sorry. I literally left um, Minnesota with $20 and I came to California and I came out here and I lived off of two tacos and water a day. Did you not? I used to take my car and I would park um, in places that you're not supposed to park because I knew that the police would always patrol there. So I put signs up that would say like, the car is broken, please don't tow. And I would sleep in between the front and the back seat of my car and I'd have a Bible in the night. So I bring that up to say from my album Dirty, if you look at Say My Name, that is actually uh, a little autobiography of my story. So when you see the video, you'll see me in the car. And we just did a little yeah. quick reenactment of how I came out here. And I was, you know, literally for me, it was, um, I always say that everything is possible if you're willing to put in the work and you are gonna get beat up, beat down, but the good news is there is always gonna be a beautiful rainbow. Something will come to, to save you. You gotta put the work in. And I, I'm a person who believes the universe rewards you for taking a chance on yourself. So I, I, I will always say that, um, you know, and then literally, I, like I said, I put one foot in front of the other and, you know, I was able to raise uh, capital. We put together a PPM. And uh, my fiance and I, because like you said, being so different, you know, singer, songwriter, guitar player. And um, for me, it was about just staying true to who I was. So many people would say, Melina, put the guitar down. What are you doing? Black girls don't play rock guitar. You know, you're a beautiful girl. You can sing and dance, make your life easy, do that. And I said, but 
there's so many different things to Melina. And obviously growing up, you know, in Minnesota, you're going to see Prince and, you know, it's just that every, like, it, to me, that, that just seemed normal. So I wanted to just always incorporate that. So I always knew that, um, you know, as we would make our way around to labels, everybody wanted to get rid of that guitar. But I was like, that's a part of me. So I'm probably going to need my own money. <laughs> and so that's what we had to do. So I always say to people, when you, when you find yourself being completely different, well, that, that's what life is. You know, I say it's like a handprint. Everybody has um, that one thing that makes you special and no two handprints are alike. So you want to find that thing that makes you you go for it and just just don't stop. So that that's what I did. That's what I that's who I am. I am a person that's going to just keep going till I see to like see the vision of what I feel. I'm a person that really believes in God and who I feel that I know what he has promised me. And I'm that person that's going to just keep going. You could tell me no a billion times. and I'm like, yeah, but. I kind of heard a little hesitation, so it is possible. <laughs> so wow. that's a, a piece of it there. <laughs> that, I got a little choked up. That, that is a huge piece. Like there is so much strength and courage. Um, and I love that part about you left home with 20 bucks. I left country with like 50 bucks when I was a teenager. I came from Eastern Europe. I didn't speak the language. You know, I was I, I was in a homeless that. shelter. You know what though? This is interesting. I love what you said. Is even though you you were in a car, you yeah. you, you that was your home. Yeah. You, you had God. You had your belief, yeah. and you were resourceful. And I don't know yes. how about you. Like even though I didn't know the language, I and and when I lived in a shelter temporarily, I never felt really alone. Um, right. And right, you you hang on to possibility. Right. Amen. That's, that's a powerful oh story. And, and you know what that teaches you too is because um, for me, it, it also taught me that I, I learned to lean on God more because at, at, for me, it was like, I, I knew nobody was really coming to save me. And I'm like, if you're going to do something, you're going to have to get up to save yourself. You're going to have to make those moves. And like I said, the universe rewards you for betting on yourself and believing yep. in yourself. And you have to just go for it. And then the, the stamina that you learn, the, um, also the gratitude that you get from when you don't have anything. I remember looking on the ground for something to eat. So I'd look for pennies and take them up to go buy something. So all those little things. And then when you get to that moment of seeing, oh my God, this person just paid me this much. You know, it becomes like, just thank you. Because you realize it is the little things that get you to the place where you are. I, people always say, um, what is success? And I like to say success is whatever you think it is. Everybody's definition of success is totally different. And that's important yep. because your version could be completely different from mine. And for some people, it could be like, hey, I woke up today and you know what? I put one foot in front of the other and I went for a walk. That's incredible. Some people cannot do that. So that, that is a definition of success. So I'm like, we have to re-look and look at how we see ourselves, how we see each other. And I mean, we live in a social media world now. And the crazy thing is you could see this person doing this and this, and you feel like, maybe I'm not doing enough. or maybe. But that's why I'm always saying, every you have to honor your journey you have to do that because you don't know like this is the thing it's kind of like um like what forrest gump says life is like a box of chocolates you never know what you get so you you, yeah. you have to go down your road because there are so many beautiful things that are in store only for you that you're going to share with other people that in turn are going to uh, touch someone else to go you know what i can do this too because of what you did and what's crazy, excuse me, is my little cat is looking at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's <Uh-oh>. okay. <laughs> Give me two seconds. Yes. I, this is insane. Two seconds. Yeah, yeah, oh, no oh, problem. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm bad. That's okay. That's life. <laughs> I know, right? Okay. It's crazy. My cat is so spoiled. It's, it's insanity. But um, no, so my thing is, is uh, and you see, that's a part of the journey. So it is. Yeah, you yeah. have to embrace all that. You know why? Because that's, that's, um, that's what helps to make all this real, right? And it's, it's the yeah. little things that help to shape who you are. And like you said, coming out, first of all, not speaking the language and then just, oh my God, and coming here with $50, like just the whole thing of hearing you say all that. Here's what I do know. No matter what, you are going to make it. <laughs> Because with that kind yes, of stamina, you. You too. that kind of belief, 
no matter what, like I go, no, oh, yeah. she's going to make oh, yeah. it. It's, whatever she sets her mind to, that is, that's going down. You want to definitely be on her team. <laughs> so that's amazing. Thank and you. that's, yeah, that's, that's like, that's, that's beautiful. That's huge. That is what inspires people. And yeah, we need people, which is obviously why you have such an incredible podcast. But I mean, it's, it's hearing those stories because it, it encourages all of us to, to believe and to see that, it, like, you know, as a, as a, a lawyer, you know yourself, the people see things, they love to have something to look at to compare it to. Um, and then we could say, well, you did it. You came here, so this is possible. And here's the yeah. proof. You are the proof. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the other thing that's just uh, absolutely astonishing about you is you really, you know, people talk about staying true to yourself and through, there many terms are being thrown out there, but you really have proven that you can, even at times of adversity, instead of following the comfortable path, you know, where, well, yeah. I should say after the times of adversity, where you yeah. started to pave the path of, of sort of walking this career yeah. and yeah. what was popular. And instead of yep. joining the crowd, following the crowd, you said, no, no, I'm going to stay true right. to myself. I love that. That's incredible. Because, let me tell you, thank you. Because the thing is, is, I mean, come on, nothing in life is truly guaranteed. What is guaranteed that we can try? And if you're going to fail, fail in your own terms. I mean, that's it. Like my whole thing is it, yeah. it, it, you got to just go for it. So I was like, you know what? I, I don't want to be somebody I'm not. And then it, it, it's just, it, it wouldn't feel right. I'm, I'm doing myself a disservice. So yeah. I was like, you know what? And, I, I, and as crazy as it is, you, you know, I think that just for any of us, you have this vision. And again, I always look at myself like the Wizard of Oz. I feel like I'm Dorothy and I have this vision and I'm the great Oz is saying, this is, you know, I, I gave this to you and this is what you want to do. And along the way, you're going to meet the Tin Man, you'll meet the Scarecrow, the Lion and all these people. It's like um, God puts different people in your path and these people help you to get to where you're going. Now, some of them, you're going to realize, hey, some of these people are actually bad. But what they're showing you is now you know what to look for so that you can go, okay, because of what took place here, I now know when I get to this stage, this is yeah. what it means. So I'm a, uh, yeah, I'm a firm believer of um, walk your own path. Don't do you, no matter what. You are your authentic self and everything that you have in your life. You actually, you, you have it inside of you that the thing is to center and to get to it. As, I think that everything that, that we're all looking to do and, and get, and how do I get this? How do I move here? I really feel like you have these tools. What happens is at each stage of you getting through some, uh, how would you say it? Something that it could be a test. You pass that test. Suddenly it opens up another key and you're thinking on another plane. Perspective is extremely important. <laughs> because yes. You, you, you oh know my gosh. I mean? Yeah. You know what? I, I cannot help it. Uh, have, you, have you ever met Prince? Yes. So for being, being from Minneapolis, so, so yeah, my whole thing is, you know, growing up in Minnesota, um, uh. quick story, you know, it was uh, someone had saw me and basically they were like, hey, you know, um, we ended up having the chance to, well, I should say, I hung out at Paisley Park very, very young and I was able to hang out with Prince every day. And I learned a tremendous amount from just watching him. So that, wow. and, and let me tell you, when everything was done, the one thing I remember I said is, Mr. Prince, after hanging out with you, and I feel like I can go out in the world and really be somebody and do it. And I just remember, like, when you have a person like Prince, Prince saying to you, Melina, I look forward to watching. <laughs> then it becomes oh like, you, you think you can do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you have certain people say crazy things, which isn't crazy, but, you know, because all my friends always say, well, Melina, look at you. You're talking to all these people and, you know, they're giving you so, such encouragement. You know, you, you, of course, you're going to think you can do it. And I said, because to me, it. I, yeah, I'm like, why would it not happen? I mean, wow. Prince said he looks forward yeah. to seeing me do it. Of course it's going to happen. So, you know, so then you just keep going. Like, it's, trust me, there have been situations where you're like, um, there's nothing. What are we going to do? Like, I remember when, when I first, first got my uh, deal, right? Meaning my distribution that we set up. What people don't realize is I remember going, oh, my God, these people finally paying attention. They love it. And I said, this is what I'm looking to do. It gives me total control. And um, I can bring my team to the, to the table. Of course, we can work with your team and be a great partnership. And let me just tell you, even when I did that, it was like maybe $5 was in my account. Kid you not. But I was like, oh, yeah. 
Oh my God, of course yeah. I have capital, like, of course. And let me tell you, it, it was a, like I said, by the grace of God, like, and you'd be amazed of how you literally put things together and you just start going out with the pitch and suddenly you'll see other people show up for you. And like mm -hmm. I said, that goes right back to that PPM. I had no idea anything about it. My fiance's like, Melina, you know what? We're going to raise this capital. Um, and I said, yeah, I basically told these people I have, you know, everything they're asking for. And the truth is that is completely not true at all. But I'm like, <laughs> I wouldn't be Melina Moy if I didn't say this is possible. So we did it. Wow. And, and yeah, and then that, that changed everything. Literally, that opened up a whole other. Wow. Like, I mean, it, one thing I always say is uh, money, having money does two things. It, it makes life obviously a lot easier. Um, and then I always say money makes you exactly who you are. <laughs> you can find you, you'll start to see the wow. people that you're actually dealing with. Yes. <laughs> yes. Know? That's, that's <laughs> actually, that, that's well said. You're right. It brings out who you truly are, right? Good. Yeah. Answer. And then you, you, right. And all money ain't good money. So you, yep. right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, trust me. Yeah. You, yeah. So my thing is, yeah. So you just go with the flow. And like I said, I've had a chance to honor the queen of England to, you know, again, sit with people who had nothing. I mean, nothing. And then like, for me, I always say, I can never say that I have truly never had nothing. When I went to India and I saw these people literally um, on the street where they had all their items on the street, at least I was in the car, right? And these, but mm. the coolest thing was they were so happy. It was like, yes. this is the, the, these items, this is nothing, this is, we love each other. We're praying. We're, we're, we're content with our spirituality, who we are. And I was like, wow, this is that it's, it's just that you, you start to just see things again, perspective. And I said, man, I can never say, you know, I, I had nothing. I mean, these, this is to me, I'm going, oh my God, like to, to really be taking your entire living room and just take it outside. And you just would see blocks of people like living like this is okay. And I was like, wow. And I'm like, you know what? Or seeing four or five people, you know, in, in Jakarta uh, on a bike, an entire family on one bike. I was like, that's, but, but it just goes to show you that the power of belief is so important because, yeah. and the will that you can make anything happen. And I think that when you don't have anything, that's when you become extremely creative because you start to figure out how do I yes. make this work? Yeah, I don't have this list. And, but to me, it's, it's, it's the best because it, wow, it, it definitely takes you to another level because you're going to discover things that other people would never see. Perspective, again. Oh, perspective <laughs> is, is it's, it's humongous. And instead of as you're attaining more wealth and, um, yes. and, and getting to stuff is, is not trying to fill it in, but just remembering where you came from and just maintaining the sense of yourself you know, I, I that's one one of my regrets is is never attending Prince's concert. He's been my my idol my entire life. And so when I heard you and see seen your video and, and play, I, I instantly, without knowing anything about you, I instantly knew that um mm. that there was that you must have that the he the, he must have been not your mentor, but sort of, you know, your he impacted you in some way, Absolutely. shape, or form. And he, here's the other kicker. Here's the other funny thing. So my first video of you was when you actually, <laughs> when you play national anthem at the sold out Vikings Cowboys game in, in Minnesota, actually, and uh, yeah. with like 80,000 people in the stadium and it was yeah. in 2010. Now, yep, was, to, yeah. say, yeah. to say yeah. that my husband is a Minnesota Vikings fan, that's an understatement, okay? Wow, so, <laughs> okay. He, and we're in New York. So it's just I'm I'm watching it and and first of all it was a solo guitar um number and it was so crispy and it was so powerful and I mean I just had goosebumps and I thought this woman is different and I know so you wore jersey with the number 17 and there's a significance to it right Yes okay so check this out so uh, thank you so much for all that. The, the thing is, yep, coming from Minnesota, I had a chance to go back. So I was excited just for the opportunity to um, play. And at first they were like, yeah, we want you to come sing the anthem. I said, you know what, this time, I think I'm gonna play guitar. I think I'm gonna try something a little different. I was like, you know, I, I, 
keep in mind, I wasn't thinking, oh, yeah, let me make this Jimi Hendrix. Because in my mind, Jimmy's a whole other animal. He's Jimi Hendrix. There's no one <laughs> ever going to compete with that. So I just said, I'm going to just do Melina and do this. And what was cool about it was um, it was October 17th. And I want to say that um, at the time, Adrian Peterson was, I guess, the, the player that everybody loved and spoke about. And I think that that was maybe I think it might have been his number. But the, the, the cool thing about it was the 17th was October 17th was the date that that happened. That's how I remember this. And when I did it, I um, again, just happy to go out and do my thing. And then at the end, they were like, oh, my God, you just made history. I'm like, huh? And then that um, literally set up all these things because they were saying you're the first African-American woman to actually take a guitar and make it a lead instrument at a major sporting event. And it was that game. So that was incredible. Cut to then I was like, you know what? You can't compete with that. Like, like to me, I'm like, I like I so many people would ask me to come play. And I said, man, that was amazing. And I can't see topping that for me unless it's like maybe the Super Bowl or something. I was like, I right. did enough. It was like that was good. It was great. And then what was crazy is the Vikings said, hey, listen, we have the I guess it, is it the buy or something where they wasn't sure if it was going to yeah. be the 17th or another day. And they were like, hey, so we love for you to come back to do this. And this game was so important because I will never forget it. It ended up being um, December 17th. So therefore, again, there was the 17th. I said, oh my God, I'm gonna take that number because I made history um, years before in 2010. Then we come back and the game that we end up doing was at the time, Kirk Cousins was our um, quarterback. And I just remember saying to my brother, are we, you think we're going to win this? And we were down, like, it was like, it, no way in the world you would do it. He goes, yeah. well, gosh, all we need is seven touchdowns. And I said, oh, okay, well then I'll be right back. So then I, I, I remember I played the anthem, came back, and then all of a sudden that becomes the greatest comeback in the NFL history. So to be a part of both of them was wow. that was, that is like, oh my God, that was wow. so amazing. And the team was great. And just to see the energy in yeah. first the Metrodome and then to be at the U.S. Bank Stadium. I have never seen that type of power and energy from people. And I was like, wow. I mean, when I tell you how people were leaving because they thought this game was over and then when it just came back where it was tied, I mean, people were doing the whole skull chant. And I mean, it was thousands. And I mean, it was incredible. So. Wow. I'm like, so to me, those were uh, unbelievable moments. And then um, I had a chance to do NASCAR. So, but that one, that was a little different. I'm going to be honest. Um, <laughs> I was just like, okay, look, that sounds fun. Let's, let's do it. No problem. And then I, I, I got to be honest with you. I had no idea just the mere, but again, coming from where I came from and having all the things like as a woman, as a female player, as a black woman, I mean, come on, you are going to be told no, yeah. you're going to be shut down. People are never going to look at you as the one or to do anything. So you got to always just work harder. So being in that moment, I just remember like, this is okay. I've done a bunch of these anthems. This is, this should be great. We're on Fox. Okay. Oh my God. So once I got back and I started seeing these comments, I was like, oh my God, just the mere idea of me standing there wow. with the guitar. These people haven't even heard me hit a note. People were saying, Soon as I saw her, I muted the television. And then it was like, you know, this must, she must be uh, related to Bubba Wallace. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? So it made me realize that there is a lot of change that needs to happen, but kudos to NASCAR um, for bringing me in. So I, and, I, and I actually wrote back and said, you know what, I'm gonna be honest, I've done um, uh, some, some great anthems and some incredible environments. And my thing is, I'm grateful and thank you guys for inviting me to come. And I do hope that you continue to, um, be diverse and just keep inviting everyone to come and participate because that's the only way real change happens. And it, but that was the first time I ever experienced it on that level. I mean, and it, I was it's blown away. And people literally had full on conversations and dissertations about, oh, this person, she had, she's black and they're going to be wanting to do Negro spirituals. And I was like, hold up. So, you know, I had never seen it to that level ever ever so it made me realize wow um a obviously the anthem is as something that we all know and hold true and dear to our yeah. hearts but just sometimes being black and i think for them it was being a woman yeah. and then playing guitar that's like oh my god they're like <laughs> which one minute, girl. which one came <laughs> first which one was worst <laughs> yeah, that's, oh. that's the part oh. <laughs> it made you laugh wow. because then i said okay i can only laugh about this because then the guy said 
where is um what what is the gentleman's name? The the, the one that, that everybody always looks for the tip of my tongue. Uh oh my god. It, and I was like, okay, I get it. So I'm pretty much hitting every negative because I'm black, I'm a woman, and I play guitar. Uh, yeah, you're a triple threat. Like, you're triple Ted threat. Nugent? That's right. There Where's you Ted go. Nugent? I said, How? oh, I, <laughs> I said, okay. I said, Ted Nugent's great. I said, okay, I, I get what it is. But it's cool. And you know what? I, I said, I hope that another person that wants to go up to it, I said, do it. Because no matter what, um, yes. yeah, you're going to just have your skin ready and do you. And and, and have fun and, and be the best representation for yourself. Um, and I should say for others, and obviously for me, I felt for the country because that, that, that's what you're, you're doing. And it was, to me, I think that one definitely was the one that made me go, holy shit, you know, this is, I, I, yeah, they were like, she's unpatriotic. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, oh, so I, I, I never experienced that. I mean, to that level, but yes. I've had death threats, but this one was a whole other level. <laughs> Yeah. You're you're incredible, yeah. and I sense that nothing's stopping you, and you are yourself, your authentic self, mm -hmm. and here you are. You could you could be hiding or stopping, and and instead using this as a platform, you you keep going, um, Amen. and and because this is this is so needed, this this change, uh, and here you are in the middle of all that, and and almost like you used your own adversity, you know, for healing. Yeah. It's it's incredible. Yeah, your music is. And you're you're okay. So being a lefty and a guitarist, mm -hmm. I mean, were you a rebel mm -hmm. growing up, or how? <laughs> yeah. no, how I'm did a, that? I'm a lefty. Say. I'm a lefty too. So, <laughs> oh, so then, yeah, you already. So then you know, basically, um, you know, because my dad, like I said, everybody's right-handed, and I remember yeah. my dad would always say, um, he gave me a guitar to play it like a right-handed person, and I was like, man, I, I can't do that. It, so when he left the room, I took the guitar and flipped it upside down, and I started playing, and he was like, Melina, that is backwards. No one plays like that. <laughs> and he's like, well, Hendrix, but I mean, he said, well, and he just considered, he just kept teaching me that way. And I just took it and kept going. And then I remember finally he goes, you know, I guess I could have bought you a left-handed guitar. He said, but what happens is, um, you know, when you go to any of these guitar places, you will be able to pick up a right-handed guitar and flip it upside down. So the thing is, I actually play backwards. So even the chords, everything is upside down. Wow. So there's only a couple of people in the world who actually play like that. Which is why I'm always like, you know, we are completely play backwards. But yeah, I'm so lefty. Like everything is 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 lefty. So I'm always like, no, I'm not acting. I I could not do anything with the right hand if I tried. So yeah, wow. you know, I mean, think you know what it is. Like uh, yeah. yeah, everything seems yeah. like weird, right? But um, yeah, you know what? Works, right? I never I never really cared. Uh, I, but it's interesting. I'm just trying to think. Like yes, I do write with my left hand, but there's some things that I do with my right. And my mom back in the, the old country used to tell me that I think back that generation, they almost like would try and correct it. Uh, yeah, and sure. uh, I, I can't even I can't even imagine that that would be an issue. But there you go. Another challenge. Like, that's not a challenge. I'm just going <laughs> to I'm just going to go right through it and figure out a way to make it happen. Um, yeah, that's yeah, this is really inspiring. What's so what's next for you? Well, you know what? Um Right now, uh, what I, I was going to say, because there's a couple of things that I was going to say that I can, I'm trying to think what I can actually talk about, but I'll say this. What's cool is I wanted to also venture myself um, to venture in, I should say, more television, but looking at more um, helping to create shows as well. Because again, mm -hmm. like I said, I see certain spaces and I definitely want to see myself in those spaces and being a person who's always like saying, you know what, hey. You know, I own my own label. We write the music. We bring everybody in. We build our teams. Let's do the same and bring more into um, the theatrical realm. So I will definitely say that there's some projects that I cannot wait to announce. And I think people are going to go, oh, okay, that makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> all, like, it's that, okay, I get it. So definitely that. And then, um, obviously, you know, you're going to always keep uh, writing the new record. The good news is we yeah. finished doing our touring uh the last couple of years, I like literally, tra you know, all over Europe traveling. Same thing here wow. in America. We just got right. That's what I said. Was, you know, just coming back, and so now the good news is, um, I think we're taking this month to just relax a little bit since I have, mm. you know. But I think that I got to take off as, as I'm looking at it. I think the middle of October, then we'll go out for a couple more weeks. But again, that's going to be some East Coast stuff. So I'll let you know for sure because I would love to meet you. Um, to come up to New York. Yes. That's it. We actually yes. did New York my last trip. That's why I was sitting there going, we literally <laughs> did just do New York. 
So there'll be some other places like maybe Massachusetts that we got to hit. But I know we just did New York like maybe three weeks ago. So, um, yeah, that and I want to say just um, really honing in on the, these theatrical uh, shows and TV shows that we are trying to just, um, yeah, to, to really make this work, which I think they will. Because like I said, I'm the person that believes when God gives you a vision, he also gave you the tools and the energy and the wherewithal to make those things happen. So I know that they will. You have it all. <laughs> you, you have the right, you, you do. No, you do. You. you have the right perspective. You do have the right perspective. You. you have the strength that comes from within. You have this incredible sense of who you are. Um, there's, you're unstoppable. And, you know, that, that's you. dangerous. That's actually, I love that, you know. And I call it, I don't give a F kind of a, a thing. Right. You know, it's like, you know, it's not about people pleasing. It's about this innate belief in oh. yourself and then being able to help others and, you know, through your music. And I, I'm sure they'll be in a phenomenal theatrical performance and you you are on fire and just really epitome of someone who says, no, you know what, if, if it can be done, I will make it happen. Yep. And people who will tell me, no, step out of my way. I'm paving right. my Thank own. You. And it yes. takes one to know one. So I always say that. So that, that, that's right. what I say you. When you tell me that story, I'm like, oh, man, that, that's it. You're going. It, it, we <laughs> get on her train or you're going to get left. That's it. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm there you go. Too. Well, thank you. Well, what, what's also cool is I forgot. Like, I mean, so many good things is, is um, one of the things, too, is um, we're going to have a partnership that's going to be announced pretty soon. Uh, I think it's going to be with guitars. So that's going to be great, which I am so okay. excited about. Of course, we still have our signature guitar strings, which are available that you can pick up from Dean Markley as well as my site. And then what I was so most proud of this year is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame had uh, included me for the Revolutionary Women and to go out there and to unveil the case for um, women who are taking action and again, uses song, story, everything that we talked about today so that again, like my song Enough, we, you matter and you count and no matter what, this is what I always say. When you don't see yourself represented, show up. When you think you can't, show up and always know you matter and you count. That's it. End the story. And um, to be up there with people who I love, who I admire. And man, and you know what's so cool? is like just to see how cool they were. Shirley Manson from Garbage. I've never met her. But like once you get in the space like with yourself, you're just like, oh my God. What yeah. a cool lady. Like, you are just incredible. And then Jane from the Go-Go's and Lisa Loeb and Suzanne Vega, just all these incredible women. And I would also encourage anybody, if you're in Cleveland, stop by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Check out the revolutionary um, exhibit because it was built by women, curated by women, and it features women. And it's the first of its kind that has all that going. And it's at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And some of the uh, people who are artists who are trailblazers, you will find some of the most incredible artifacts in there and you'll learn things that um, you didn't know. And I think it's always inspiring and encouraging to, yeah, just check it out and just see and have fun. No, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you are mentioning this and, and I love for you to tell that story and, and your own story and talk about your own accomplishments and, and what's to come. Um, because you, 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 you are, you're storytelling with such great energy and conviction and, and it shows your passion and that's something to be proud of. Um, but yeah, that's, then, you know, that, that's really, that's really what this platform is about. And, and I say this, and this is probably will make you laugh. I said, you know, for all the haters out there is you can take a poop on your own feet because you don't do right. that on, on my feet. Okay. This is, this is okay. all we're spreading. We're elevating humanness and, and really look, none of us are perfect, but it's recognizing, right. you know, that we do the best we can. And our intention yeah. is to, you know, spread positivity to help others. And this is, this is, this is great. Molina, thank you so much for sharing you. your incredible story with us today. Well, you'll be back. Thank you. I, thank you. I, I, it was such a, seriously, you are so cool and just so incredible and like I always say, I love you. You Look at you. You're beautiful. Just everything about you is phenomenal. Continue to can soar. And I seriously can't wait till we can meet in real life. So please. Uh, oh, likewise. Consider me a friend. Likewise. Just a person. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. And then to find out to our viewers and listeners, to find out about Melina's upcoming projects, check out her website or social media links. All of those links will be posted below. And of course, do not forget to hit subscribe button to our Beyond the Bar podcast. Follow us on all social media channels so that you can hear inspiring guests like that. And until next time, stay curious and inspired.